This year marks 90 years since Sargent's passing in 1925. And actual items beyond his work, which can be connected to him, are rarely found. Even his signed letters are increasing in price every year. And much that once graced his studio work environment has simply slipped away with the years. But fortunately, one of the Society's founding advisors, Everett Raymond Kinsler, owns the very item that I would want to have, Sargent's palette. With his permission, we have overseen and recreated an exact museum quality reproduction of that palette, making it possible for many to own their own personal touch tone to history. And this is the story of the Sargent palette and how it made the trip from Sargent's studio on Tite Street in Chelsea, London, to Everett Raymond Kinsler's studio in Connecticut. share this note with very few people because it has such meaning to me and I still feel a, uh, a lump and a gasp and a, I think it'd be very deeply touched. But there was a note to it which I copied, I didn't replicate it and pasted it to the back. Uh, but the note said, this palette was the property of a well-known English portrait painter named Gerald Brockhurst. <clears throat> I was in his presence about five times before his death, about seven years ago. Uh, to, to skip for a moment, this was dated 87, so if he was there about seven years ago, at the time of his death, that would make it 1980, mm -hmm. which was true. So I was in his presence about five times before his death. About he told me he was a friend of Sargent's on Tite Street in London. Mr. Brockhurst's wife, Dorette, gave me this palette of Sargent. I considered it one of the most important gifts I've ever received. It gives me great happiness now to pass it on into the hands of my dear friend, Everett Raymond Kinsler, August 26, 1987, signed Paul C. Burns. An artist named Gerald Brockhurst, who was a British portrait painter, this was in 1925, bought it from the Sargent estate. Now, when he bought it near his, well, I'll tell you what it was like when I got it. But anyway, the back of the palette has still taped to it the art supply stores, which still exist, Robertson, Robertson and Company, Piccadilly Square, London. And then it's in pen here, which was written on, I think, during the, the sale palette of the late John S. Sargent R.A. and amusingly they spelled the name Sargent E.A.A. <laughs> That's fantastic. Fame or whatever, yeah. Well, it's not too bad being the grand nephew of John Singer oh, Sargent yeah, either. Yeah, That's yeah, not too bad. bad. <laughs> <laughs> nor nor the nor the couple that has inhabited the studio for 40 plus years. Um, but when I think about his career here in that 40 years and sort of building the business back from France and then having incredible success with the, the, the folks lined up, essentially, waiting yes, to come in, there. clamoring for their portrait to be painted. And then he cuts it off in 1907, essentially, tries to cut it off completely. And I'm thinking about the years after that, from 1907 to, say, 1925, and how he must have not been in these spaces as much as he traveled around. And he also, the, the, there's a third studio, the Avenue Studio, the Avenue. With the murals? Fulham Road, were? where he did the murals. Okay. And he was, yes. I mean, one of the reasons for giving up um, portrait paintings in order that he could, uh, you know, complete this great mural project. And he was very aware that he was progress had been slow because he'd been so distracted yes. by all these commissions. Which so, is probably one of the thrusts of saying, okay, I've got to stop yeah. this portrait. Yeah, and then uh, the, the two things he really wants to do is mural painting and landscape, and landscape means travel. Right. So he spends three or four months, 
in, in the summer and autumn.